So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today is a very important day in uh, my own personal life. It is on this day, the Feast of St. Louis the King. That I was, and I was uh, 18 years old. And I was deciding, what should I do with my life? All my life before that, in the long 18 years from my birth until I was 18 years old, my desire was to be two things a farmer and a soldier. I wanted to be a soldier and farmer like Cincinnatus. Cincinnatus was a Roman farmer many years ago. One day he was plowing his field. And Rome was in danger from its enemies. Soldiers were walking by the field. And they turned to Cincinnatus, the farmer, and they said to him, Rome has need of you. He let go of his plow. He left the oxen in the field. He joined the army and he fought the enemies of Rome. I used to carry a small sword with me as a boy. <laughs> and I fought many battles in the barn with the goats. <laughs> and also out in the garage with the cars. <laughs> And I knew that soon there would come a great monarch. I even had the date of his coming. It was May the 13th. Nineteen eighty-eight. One thousand years after the conversion of Russia. And many other anniversaries. Including the anniversary of Fatima. When Our Lady appeared to uh, three children. I wanted to be a soldier in the army of the great monarch and fight against the enemies of God. With the sword. Now I was 18 years old and it was May the 13th, 1988, a few months before today. <laughs> I was in St. Mary's, Kansas, in our school of the Society of St. Pius X. I was a senior in high school, my last year in high school. And I told all the other boys. <laughs> The chastisement of God is coming. It's coming on Friday, May 13, 1988. It's now 2021. It was a couple of years off. 
But I told them it would be that day. So some of my fellow classmates decided to play a prank on me. In the middle of the night, they, on Friday, May 13th, they came into my room. And they were, they were crying and shaking. My first name is Joseph. And he said, Joe, Joe, it's happening. It's happening. And one of the boys took a curtain and put it over the window and said, Don't look outside. Don't look outside. <laughs> and then they brought me out, out to the prayer room. It was about midnight. And there were eight or ten boys kneeling on the ground saying the rosary. They were all very afraid. <laughs> and they were all praying the rosary. And then I got angry. I said, you're all bad actors. <laughs> And then I turned the lights off. Mm -hmm. I said, if you did a good job, <laughs> you would have thrown off the electricity. Mm -hmm. And then they all started laughing at me. Mm -hmm. So the chastisement didn't happen on Friday, the May 13, 1988. But I told them, you wait. Right? And we're still waiting. The time will come when there will be a great monarch. A great king who will fight against the Muslims and against those evil world leaders that are trying to control our world. And he will fight against the communists. And win a war under the banner of Our Lady. And I wanted to be in that army. A knight, yeah, I wanted to be a knight in the yeah, army. Yeah. I wanted to fight in the great monarch's army. So now, from May of 1988, it is now August of 1988, on this day, August 25. And I decided I must try to enter the seminary. To try to become a priest. And probably get kicked out. <laughs> but I wanted to still fight for the great monarch. So on that day, today after praying in Novena, I walked into the office of the newly consecrated bishop, Bishop Williams. He was just consecrated a bishop by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre in June of 1988. Just a few months, a month and a half before. And my older brother was already a seminarian in the seminary. So they kind of knew me. So, but I knocked on the door. 
Bish Williamson said, Come in. Now Bish now now you own a yaw. And I walked in. Now we know. And he said, What do you want? <laughs> and I said, I want to join the seminary. <laughs> and then he said, How old are you? He said, 18. He said, Okay, get out. <laughs> <laughs> And that was my interview to join the seminary. It took longer to tell the story than the actual interview. <laughs> and so I entered the seminary. And only after becoming the priest <laughs> that I began to understand that I am fighting for the great monarch. I am truly in the fight of the great king. Saint Louis the Ninth. I wanted to be like him. And this is the way that you must be on the day of your confirmation. When St. Louis was a little boy, he did something bad. And so his mother sent him to bed. Sent him to bed. To sleep. And then at midnight, she grabbed Louis and took him out of his bed. She brought him barefoot into the chapel. And she made him kneel on the ground. And she said, Louis, I would rather see you dead at my feet than to ever know that you have offended him in the tabernacle again. And Louis so did not want to see his mother cry. And he did not want to ever be woken up by his angry mother again in the night. From that day forward, yeah. until the day he died and went to heaven, as a great saint, he never sent again. He became a true soldier of Christ. And you must become true soldiers of Christ. And recognize that there is only one whom we should fear. We should only fear God. And if we fear God, which is the first of the gifts of the Holy Ghost, we will begin to be wise. We are in an age of fools. There are fools everywhere. And the Holy Scripture tells us the number of fools is infinite. There is no complete number. We don't want to be among those numbers. So how do you become wise in a world of fools? Fear the Lord. The first of the great gifts of the Holy Ghost. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what does that mean? If we do not fear the Lord, it is the end of wisdom. A world which does not fear God 
is a world of the unwise. Or the world of fools. When we receive the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation, the bishop will give you a small slap upon the cheek. When I was five years old, I received the Sacrament of Confirmation. I was the littlest boy being confirmed. I was confirmed by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, who was the great saint of the 20th century. Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre saved the holy priesthood. And he was a great missionary because he was just a Catholic. A Catholic is a missionary. And Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre uh, brought the priesthood back to our Holy Church and kept the faith to our times. The only reason why you are able to have the Latin Tridentine Mass today is because Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre stood up in 1988 and saved the priesthood by saying no to modernist Rome and saying yes to the Catholic faith and priesthood. He confirmed me in the year 1976. This was an important year in his life. It was an important year in Bishop Archbishop Lefebvre's life. The year 1976. Okay. Can you show la? You may do more than you name and I couldn't talk with a tratala. Younger in your me. One of our day can can you hang a common It was the year that he stood up in a most public way against all of the modernists, and the TV cameras came out, and the people came and said, Look at that renegade bishop. Yam, looking on me, yah, he moan, Vedanko, a duo, he, we were missing a sample hammer, man, I'm fidgeting. The world was amazed. In 1976, Paul VI said, I am going to suppress your society of St. Pius X and bring an end to it. I am going to end your society if you try to ordain priests for Jesus Christ. Archbishop Lefebvre said, I am a bishop of the church. A bishop is supposed to ordain priests to bring other Christs into the world and send them to preach the true faith to the very ends of the earth. You have no power, Holy Father, to stop me from doing this work. And he preached a big sermon in Lille. 
in the summer of that 1976. And there were over 10,000 people there. And he said these words, I cannot lend my hand to the destruction of the church. The hand of the priest was made to build the church. And now the bishops and the priests of the church are using their hands to destroy the church. And I will not use my hand to destroy the church. And when he said those words, the 10,000 people that are supposed to be silent in church, they all began to clap. And they began to cry. Because not only must Archbishop Lefebvre not lift his hand to destroy the church, but no priest and no bishop has any right to lift their hands to destroy the church by accepting Vatican II and its lies. And in that same year of 1976, I was still a five-year-old boy. And I knelt in front of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. And he took his hand. The hand that he said he would never use to destroy the church. He anointed my forehead with the sacred oil of chrism. And he gave a very light tap on my cheek. The lightest tap that a man can make and still be able to feel it. Now it was in May of 1976. Every moment from that moment until right now, I feel the slap on my cheek. At this very moment, I feel the slap that our Christian Lefebvre gave me more than 40 years ago. His hand was very powerful. Because it was the true hand of another Christ. And a hand that builds the church of Christ and not a hand that destroys what is used to defend the church it is called this mitre if you look at the mitre you'll see it has two sharp points they are not there to make you feel good when the bishop is consecrated this mitre is put upon this head and the consecrating bishop says receive these horns of the two testaments the Old Testament and the New Testament. And appear fearsome. 
to the enemies of the truth. But the lovers of the truth, <laughs> these horns are meant to protect. They are a threat to the enemies of truth. And they are a protection to the friends of truth. When you receive the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation, you will receive a little slap. Why will you get that slap? To remind you of the infallible truth. If you fear the Lord all your life, and if you begin to be wise and truly live for heaven, if you spread the faith of Christ and if you love his ways, you will be slapped. You will be attacked by the devil. You will be persecuted. You will be attacked in so many ways if you are faithful. Be ready for the slap. So the bishop gives a practice, gentle slap. And remember that your mothers and fathers of children. Gentle slaps by mothers and fathers on babies' behinds. Prepare them to take slaps from the devil later. And, and they won't collapse. You see, science has proven that when a baby comes out from his mother, the only way he can do it is because his head is squashed. And because his head is squashed, the brains go down to his behind. <laughs> but there's a solution. <laughs> By several years of regular taps on the behind, <laughs> you can knock the brain back upstairs. <laughs> there is how we get our brains back. So the fear of mommy's wrath is, is the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of a good daddy is the beginning of wisdom. But remember, mothers and fathers, you do not spank your children because you are angry. You spank them to help them go down the right path. Like when you hit the cattle on the behind. <laughs> it is not to hurt them. It's just to make them go into the right pasture. So today is a day when you receive the Holy Many of you will receive the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation. To make you strong. To be able to fight for Christ. And that means to suffer a little for him. And remember this, whoever never suffers is never happy.
We want to be happy. And so a little bit of pain can be a preparation for great happiness. Let us be ready to suffer a little pain for our faith. And we will receive a great reward. That's why St. Lawrence laughed and told jokes while he was being burnt alive on the gridiron. Because every pain that they gave him meant more gold, more glory, and more happiness in heaven. And this glory and this happiness lasts forever. But the infinite fools of the modern world who follow the way of our times they shall be always miserable and forever forgotten we don't want to be with them let's be with our holy mother the mother of God she knows how to help us become strong. And when we receive blows, the Blessed Virgin Mary absorbs the pain. And when we fight the devil, she smacks him for us. Therefore, we have nothing to fear. Love God, love Mary. Fear the Lord. And nothing else. And we will begin to be true soldiers and truly wise. And God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.